This short video will be our last video for lecture eight in our lecture series. And as a consequence, our last video for chapter three about circle trigonometry and the radian measure. And in this video, I wanna talk some more about the idea of angular velocity. Now remember that linear velocity is the speed that you're traveling along a line. Uh, so it's a change of position with respect to time. So it would be measured in something like miles per hour or feet per second. Angular velocity is similar, but angular velocity tells you how quickly your angle is changing with respect to time. And the best way to measure that is probably going to be radians per second or something like that. That is, uh, the angle measurement ought to be in radians. And let me give you one reason why the angle measurement of angular velocity ought to be in radians. Well, consider the arc length formula that we have seen previously in chapter three here. S equals R theta. So the length of an arc, and so this is measuring the linear length of an arc, uh, is equal to R theta, where R is the radius of the circle or the radius of the motion, you could say, getting sort of getting ahead of here, what we're trying to do. And then theta is the measurement of the angle. Now, when you do this formula, S equals R theta, it's necessary that angle be measured in radians. That's the only angle measurement that's appropriate. Kind of like various chemical formulas require that temperature be measured in Kelvin. Uh, similar arc length must be measured in radians. Well, if you took this formula and divided everything by time, some, some unit of time t, well, s of t, that, you know, since s is a linear distance, distance divided by time, that's a linear velocity. And so we're going to call that v for short. Um, for the second one, though, Let's keep the radius fixed and let's take theta over t in that situation because theta over t, we've seen this before, this is our angular velocity as we previously called omega. So the arc length formula, if you divide it by time, this gives you the angular velocity formula. This tells you that linear velocity is equal to the radius times angular velocity. And of course, you can do variations of this that angular velocity omega is equal to V over R and, and things like that. It's an equation you could use. Uh, but be aware of where this formula came from. It came from the standard arc length formula. This formula requires things be in radians. Therefore, this formula V equals R omega must also be in radian measure. That is, your angular velocity needs to be in radians per whatever unit of time, seconds, minutes, hours. The time, you have some flexibility, but the angle does need to be in radians. So let's just remember how we could do such a thing. Suppose we have a water wheel that completes one rotation every five seconds. What would be the angular speed in radians per second? So, you know, trying to convert these things over. So we have one rotation, one revolution every five seconds. So we have this ratio, one revolution per five seconds. Okay. Well, we want to convert that revolution into radians. So one revolution would be the same thing as two pi radians. So that one revolution turns into two pi. You have five seconds right there. And so this would give us a two pi over five, and this would be measured in radians per second or you might just call it per seconds because radians themselves is really not a unit. I mean, it's, it measures the angle there, but with these formulas, radians is often a unitless quantity there. Um, and so you get two pi over five radians per second, or you could approximate that and you end up with 1.257 uh, radians per second. And so we could then calculate, now we, we, we do have the angular speed here. This is this omega value. And we could compute, say, the linear velocity uh, using that information. So consider a bicycle whose wheels are 28 inches in diameter. If a tachometer determines the wheels are rotating at 180 RPMs, RPM here represents revolutions per minute, uh, let's find the speed that the bike is traveling down the road in miles per hour. All right, so what is, what is being asked in this story problem here? We want to find the speed of the bicycle. Well, there's two types of speeds we're talking about. There's linear speed and there's angular speed. That's why it tells us the speed down the road. This thing is looking for the linear velocity. We need to find V and we need to do it in miles per hour. Okay, so in order to do that, we're gonna utilize the formula that V equals R times omega. So we can compute the linear speed if we know the radius and we know the angular velocity. Now we do know about the radius, right? We're told that the diameter of the bicycle wheel is 28 inches. So this tells us that the diameter will equal 28 inches. 
and taking half of that, the radius is equal to 14 inches. So we do have the radius, that's good. What about the angular uh, velocity, omega? Well, we're told that the wheels are spinning at 100 revolu 180 revolutions per minute. So that gives us that omega equals 180 RPMs. All right, but in order to use this formula, we have to be measuring the angles in not revolutions, not in degrees, but in radians. And so we have to convert the angles over like we saw just a little bit ago. Um, revolutions per minute means 180 revolutions, how many times it rotates, per one minute of time. And like we've seen what to do, one revolution is equal to a, two pi radians, like so. So we stick that together. Uh, 180 times 2, of course, is 360. So we see omega is equal to 360 pi radians per minute. So now we have an appropriate angular velocity. But it turns out that's just half the fight now. We could take r times omega to get v, but the units don't really match up, right? We need to be in miles per hour. Okay, so our distance for the radius was measured in inches. We got to convert that over. And our measurement of time wasn't in hours, it's in minutes. Okay, so let's let's think about that for a little bit. V is going to equal R times omega, which R was 14 inches. And omega is 360 pi radians per one minute of time. Okay, so let's first figure out how we deal with the time, right? We don't want minutes, we want hours. So we want to have one hour in the denominator. Well, one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. So we have to take 60 divided by one to convert from minutes to hours so that the minutes cancel out. Now we're in hours as our time unit. What about distance here though? Well, we have to convert from inches to miles and that you can just, you know, you could Google it to try to figure it out, but you can do the same type of strategy, right? We can switch from inches to feet, right? You have per one foot, we want this in the numerator, right? We want the units in the top to be miles. You have one foot is equal to 12 inches so that these inches cancel out. Now we're measuring feet per hour, which isn't quite right yet. So we have to convert from feet to miles for which one mile is equal to 5,280 feet for which now the feet cancel out. And now looking at the units here, because again, you kind of ignore the radians when it comes to these things. You're gonna have miles per hour. This is now the correct unit that we want here. So what does this quantity look like? Well, we have a 14 times a 360 pi. Uh, going forward, we have a 60. Uh, this is over 12. And then a 5,280, like so. Um, and so then we try to simplify this best we can. You know, we, and we could go through all the details of this, like 12 goes into 60, uh, you know, five times, whatever. But without, without boring you with all of the arithmetic here, this thing would simplify to be 105 pi over 22. There's a lot of common factors in the numerator and denominator there that cancel out. So you're going to get 105 pi over 22. Uh, this, of course, is still in miles per hour. And again, that's not a very useful number in the current expression. So let's approximate it. Um, if you put that in a calculator, you'd end up with 14.99 miles per hour. So I think it's fair to say that, oh, the bike is is traveling at 15 miles per hour, which we'll be able to compute using our angular velocity formula. That concludes then lecture eight. Thanks everyone for watching. If you learned anything, please hit the like button. If you would like to see more videos like this in the future, subscribe to the channel. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comments below.